Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to FX Closing Bell, closing out quite a week uh, here of trading. Uh, in, in fact, FX has kind of been held in envy, if you will, uh, when, when looking at a macro perspective because of some of the trends that are developing and some of the uh, the emerging themes, if you will, uh, such as such as Euro bullishness, which uh, is, is going to run through today's session, and, you, and you'll see that kind of woven throughout different uh, different markets and different stories that we talk about uh, with, a, with a specific emphasis now naturally on yesterday's ECB decision uh, and, and where the euro stands in relation to uh, other G4 currencies, which is going to be sterling yen and USD. Uh, before I get on to the fun stuff, let me take care of some housekeeping, if you don't mind. This will be quick and painless, and there is no no quiz afterwards. So a uh, risk disclaimer states that trading on margin can result in losses that may exceed deposited funds. I'll leave that up for a few more seconds before getting to the hypothetical trading disclaimer, uh, which essentially states that there are no guaranteed profits uh, from attending this session. There will not be an explicit trade idea provided. Uh, this is more on me giving you my view of themes, developing trades, uh, trades that are maybe uh, coming to an end, things of that nature. Uh, and, and of course, if you have questions, uh, whether you're watching this live or whether you're watching the recording of it, you are welcome to reach out to me either via email or at Twitter. Um, for what it's worth, I'm I'm not gifted with uh, brevity. That is that is not something that I was uh, that I was that I was given in, in terms of my genetic code. So uh, answers via Twitter. Um, I'll try my best <laughs> to get the answer to you, but email might be best. Uh, you you are welcome uh, to reach out to me if you have questions about the content that you're going to see here today, some of the themes that I discussed, and some of the trades being uh, that I think are developing. Also, when you sign up for this webinar, you do get access to an IG demo account. It's completely up to you whether or not you want to use that. Um, but if you do and you have questions about what are some things that we have that have been helpful to traders in the past in terms of putting this to action, uh, I'd be happy to share some of those things with you. Uh, for those of you that are new, first, welcome. Second, uh, this is about a 30-minute session where we really nail down key themes across rates, also known as fixed income or bonds, uh, commodities, and FX. And, and, and really, FX is uh, at the bottom of the funnel, if you will. All right, so today's top story, um, not, not so much a story as a development, which is just uh, Euro dollar is approaching, is approaching that uh, 117 mark. So that's something that naturally uh, is putting us closer and closer to that 2015 high on August 24th. Uh, and, I'll, and I'll have some charts here, but um, naturally this is, this is not only being compounded with the view that and we talked about this yesterday, that the market basically ignored, discounted, whatever you want to call it, uh, Draghi's dovish remarks, uh, and, and is focusing on the uh, the, the eventual tightening that is about to, to, to come down the pike. And uh, if you remember one of the charts I shared with you yesterday from the City Pain Index uh, was on uh, was on the fact that when, when you look at Citi's flow positioning, it basically showed that a lot of the rally we've seen so far, at least from their standpoint, has been short unwinding their trades, uh, which as you can imagine, given the the pulsing you know parity calls over the years, it, it's built up quite a bit. And, and, and that to me is very significant because it to me at least shows that if the dollar isn't going to change its story, if it's not going to change its course, then Euro could move into the 20s. Um, and, and so that's that's uh, to me going to be something important to watch in, in the second half. Uh, the top chart, we're going to take a look at crude oil. Uh, there is a meeting coming up between OPEC and Russia in St. Petersburg, basically to, to talk about how things are going uh, in terms of in terms of the uh, the production curve. Uh, giving you the punchline up front, it's not going well. And, and it seems like there is no uh, for lack of a better word, solution that they have in mind for a uh, for for clearing the glut, the supply glut. Uh, in terms of sentiment, euro pound, and, and I'm going to kind of break down some of the uh, things that to me uh, make euro pound still an attractive option. Um, and and uh, you know I think if you look at euro yen, euro pound, or euro USD, you could see different things that would argue for bullishness uh, continuing there. Uh, and then from a sentiment perspective, uh, we did have. Canadian data out. That was probably the tier one data point of the day. Canadian CPI and retail sales. While um, CPI wasn't as good as forecast, uh, retail sales was better. I don't think it really changes what happens with the Bank of Canada, but doesn't hurt. All that being said, in fact, let me just uh, pull up that chart real quick. Uh, all that being said, uh, it, it, it did cause another uh, push lower. And let me get this chart here for you guys. Uh, so first thing you're going to see is Euro USD. Uh, near those uh, near near those 23 month highs, uh, but next let me go to dollar CAD. 
Uh, and again, we're really just seeing a continuation of uh, dollar weakness here. But uh, on that on that data print, you can see we did punch lower. Uh, and while this is a pretty clean, pretty tight channel, um, it, it is a lower high lower low story. This is just a classic downtrend. So that is the strong week pair for now. Now some of you may be asking and some of you may know, uh, you know, what happened with Ozzy? Well, RBA's DeBell came out, Guy DeBell from the RBA came out, basically told uh, told the market not to read into the, the increase of the uh, reference rate or the neutral rate, excuse me. Uh, he's saying that that's not, that's not predictive of a policy shift, uh, which, and, and we'll see uh, the market responded to that. So, so there's actually a pretty decent bid in bonds, uh, in Aussie bonds uh, on that, on that announcement. In fact, if you look at the top movers of the day from a global macro perspective, um, you've got uh, really, uh, you just want to go across the board. Uh, you've got, uh, in terms of bonds, it's, it's, it's Aussie, Bonds being bid, so the yield is lower by about 4%. Uh, crude off about 2.5%. You've got the DAX off about 1.6%, which is being blamed on Euro strength. Uh, and then you've got uh, yen strength uh, right there as well as uh, some Aussie weakness in terms of the FX and, and, and the FX realm. All right, let's go to the top movers. Uh, I just gave you a, a bit of a taste for that. Uh, but uh, again, we do have uh, continued Euro strength. In fact, that needs to be updated uh, because <clears throat> that's right now at 0.3% uh, for, for Euro strength. So Euro strength is still present. Uh, yen is stronger. In fact, let me just go to the charts instead of showing you that slide. Um, so you've got yen strength, which you can see here, we're coming to a pretty important point here. Uh, and, and institutionally, a lot of traders still like yen weakness. And I do too just not against the dollar. The dollar right now, again, from a strong wheat perspective, is the weakest currency um, on a relative basis. When you look at when you look at a uh, four hour chart, 200 period moving average, there's really uh, very, very little reason to be long dollar anything. Um, and, and dollar yen is no exception. Now, again, Euro yen, different story. Uh, Aussie yen, CAD yen, Kiwi yen, different story. Uh, but dollar yen, you can see here, we're, we're actually pulling below that 618. We're, we're breaking below this bullish channel that had been built. Um, as you can see, we're also basically testing the, uh, the Ichimoku cloud base. So this seems to be accelerating and that's going to be important to see if, you know, quite simply, uh, maybe what we could be looking at, and I'm just going to, I'm going to draw this up, uh, is a uh, is a triangle, um, and, and so uh, basically what we could have here is a, a three wave move down a, and then this could be consolidating. So where I have this starting here, let me just draw a vertical line, make it a little bit easier for us to look at. So from the right of that vertical line, it's possible we could be triangulating, which which would mean that we could soon see an extension down here. I say soon, soon is relative. Uh, we could see a a continuation of this move down, uh, basically from December to April. Uh, once the triangle finishes, we could see a, a stronger breakdown. Uh, and again, that could be dollar led as much as yen led. Uh, we'll, we'll see. Um, okay, let's go to uh, to commodities. So I mentioned earlier, oil has been uh, not in a pretty position. Uh, it's actually the the top chart of the day. Let me just bring this up. And the reason why the the focus here um, is not only the fact that we're down. Uh, Around two and a quarter percent on oil, uh, but is where we where we pushed off from yesterday. You know, on Wednesday we had a rather supportive EIA note uh, that their their inventory data was was encouraging. Uh, this morning a report came out from Petro Logistics, uh, and they basically said, listen, the the the, the, the tr tanker tracker data. Sorry, a bit of a tongue tie there. The tanker tracker data is showing OPEC monthly production around. Uh, equaling roughly 33 million uh, or over, excuse me, over 33 million barrels a day. Why that's important is because the agreement specifically states 32 and a half million barrels per day. Um, we've had Iraq come out saying they're going to increase supply. We talked about Ecuador, um, and and it doesn't appear like there is going to be any hope for further cuts uh, for multiple reasons. Uh, they they've seen that U.S. Shell has basically come in and benefited the most from the cuts. Um, any support in oil prices, and, and again, they need the revenue fiscally. Oil, it, it's very, very important for them, uh, and, and and that was that was Ecuador's argument. They need the money. Uh, all that being said, um, that aside, looking at the chart, 
this lower high off of resistance from multiple standpoints uh, is is discouraging and makes it look like this was just a three wave move higher, a correction higher, and a downtrend, which is soon to resume. Uh, going back here, let's go to gold. So gold is set up for its second weekly gain. Uh, that that would basically be the first time we've seen that since early June, um, and and again a rather encouraging sign because again look where it's happening at. It's it's happening into the cloud. It's happening above that six year trend line. Let me go to a weekly chart here so uh, again you can get a, an appreciation for this trend line and again if this if this is bought uh, if this is bought that's that's gonna be in my opinion a big deal if this is excuse me if this is a uh, bid above this trend line that's gonna be a big deal uh, so it's it's definitely gonna be worth watching um, it's too early to call this a, a bottoming out process but it seems like with the very weak dollar, other things that are developing uh, in, in terms of uh, political messes around the world um, that we're we do see tender for this to, 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 to move higher. So definitely worth watching on the precious side. Now, I, as I've mentioned before, I like the base case better. Now, uh, currently iron ore having a rather rough day, uh, but uh, if, if you look at some of the fundamental factors that are supportive for uh, base metals, that's that's rather encouraging. Uh, so uh, we'll, we'll take a look at that in just a moment, uh, but iron ore off by about 3% on the day. Uh, in, in terms of fixed income, and I'll have a chart for you later on, but again, Aussie was a big mover, uh, down about 3.6%, uh, and then equities, I mentioned earlier as well, DAX off about 1.6% uh, on, on the euro strength. So let's go to rates, and I promise you guys there will not be as many charts <laughs> for fixed income as there has been in the last few days. You guys have been uh, incredibly, incredibly patient with me. So uh, first and foremost, thank you guys uh, for that. All right, so going going into uh, looking at the market today, we've, we've basically seen uh, in terms of the U.S. Treasury complex uh, a, a bid there, meaning lower yields on the drop in oil. Uh, let, me, let me pull up TNX. TNX is the uh, Chicago board. Uh, that's the, uh, the the yield there. So uh, again, the the longer term view remains that uh, we, longer term meaning like thirty year bond thirty year bond bull market bond bulls basically bringing yields lower. Uh, but you can see here we are pushing back below this trend line. Um, so this is going to be important to watch. Um, you know, uh, Ralph Paul and his Real Vision service, uh, you know, has made multiple claims for I think fifty bips, uh, basically saying, listen, we have to have a recession sometime. This cycle is going to crest at some point uh, and if and if we do have a recession then then he expects this trend to just continue on so uh, pretty pretty bold claim but all that being said you can see what we don't really have currently what appears to be the environment for a sell-off in bonds a push higher in yields uh, and and I would say you know right now the only thing that I see really standing in the way of that view uh, or this trend continuation lower in yields which is aligned with uh, a weaker dollar if yields push lower uh, at least in in the current environment uh, that could shift on a more macro perspective down the road but I'll, I'll share that with you if that does happen uh, but is is the idea that uh, that Quite simply, we could see a surprisingly aggressive Fed if they adjust to the overly lax financial condition and uh, financial conditions. So one of the one of the the markets that I've shared with you guys is the Chicago Fed financial condition index. Uh, and, and when you look at that, and again, the reason why I bring that up uh, is because that's something that uh, that Bill Dudley of the Bill Dudley of the uh, New York Fed has mentioned, uh, but is that we're, we're currently sitting and it got it got lower this week, so below zero, the way to read it is below zero, uh, it shows basically uh, easing financial conditions. So uh, right now we're at the lowest levels since 2014 uh, and, and could, could break below that. But all that being said, they have mentioned that that was kind of one of the quote unquote sins of the Fed uh, in 2002 to 2000. Six is that while they were hiking, they weren't aggressive enough um, in, in the sense of in the sense of financial conditions were so easy they should have been there um, to to hopefully prevent uh, such an aggressive uh, blow up in credit once again. Uh, another thing I think that's worth keeping an eye on, uh, and I don't think I have this specific chart, uh, but is that you do have what we're seeing at least in the in the euro dollar strip, which is a, again a futures market that is indicative of dollar direction, uh, is we're seeing put activity in SEP 17. Uh, and so a September 17 put, any type of put really on the euro dollar curve, is indicative of uh, a, a higher 
discount rate, uh, which is dollar bullish uh, when looking at these markets. So uh, I, I say that to say it's it's not it's not it's not signaling a dollar buy, uh, but it's something worth keeping an eye on. Uh, and if that if that moves lower, that could be indicative of a potential shift in the dollar, which again is not something uh, to forecast right now. Uh, it is worth noting also just in the rate space, though though volatility is low, we still need to look ahead to FOMC next week. Um, the most people will probably be you know be taking a lunch break instead of instead of watching it uh, because so little is priced in. You can see the market implied odds for a hike uh, for this meeting is is zero percent. Uh, it it I'll oscillate every once in a while, but zero uh, percent uh, for July, six percent odds for a uh, for a hike in September, forty percent odds for a hike in December. The headliner, if you will, uh, is an expectation that we'll see a uh, that we'll see a heads up about the balance sheet. So that th that's that's really what's being expected. However, another thing that I'm interested in is how will they address the increasingly weak data, both in inflation and growth. And that to me has the ability to be the biggest market mover if they say, you know, quite simply that uh, if, if data continues on this pace, it would change their course, uh, change, you know, change dot plot, anything of that nature that communicates from them that they are, they are taking this weakness in data more seriously Earlier in the year, in the May the May uh, announcement, they called the data transit the data weakness transitory, uh, but that doesn't seem to be the case. So, all that being said, that to me is what likely will be the biggest mover. Uh, and then I mentioned this earlier, but just worth noting before I get to the charts here. Uh, and in fact, I'll, I'll 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 show the charts as I read this line uh, that we we did see uh, Australian debt move up, meaning the the bill yields move down uh, on to Bell's comments, basically saying, listen, we're not we're not seeing a higher new neutral rate as uh, predictive of a policy change, i.e. a rate hike. Uh, so you could see here uh, that yield moved lower uh, on the um, on the difference between the the uh, this the deck 17 bills and the March uh, the March 17 18 bills. So uh, all, all that being said with that that the decrease that basically shows that what was a priced in hike kind of got taken out. And so does it mean to me that uh, the Aussie dollar trend is over at all, uh, but that we might be seeing a bit more of a correction? And let me just show you from this angle. So uh, you can see here, we spiked earlier in the week on dollar weakness. Sorry about that, having some mouse issues. Uh, but uh, this to me now looks like more of a more of a pullback uh, in a strong trend that will that will resume. At least it would be my expectation. All right. So going back here, uh, the next thing that I would uh, next thing I would encourage you to keep an eye on uh, is the Bund. So what you can see here, this is a chart of uh, the, the Bund breakout line that we talked about right at 50 bips. Uh, if we pull back there, it, it could be indicative of a few things. Um, that has aligned with the strong euro. Uh, keep an eye on the pullback. It's again, it's not binary to me in the sense of if we're below the line, it's euro bearish. If we're above, it's bullish. But keep an eye in the sense that if the, if that if that is a uh, a peak, meaning that we start to see a bid there, that could show or could indicate uh, that we are moving into a bit more of a risk off period, which could change the dynamics of the market right now. Uh, however, if we take out that high uh, from a few days ago, uh, that could set up quite simply uh, what we're seeing in terms of spreads and other things that would favor a stronger, would favor a stronger uh, free, stronger euro, excuse me. Uh, this is a chart I thought was helpful and it basically opens up to me the idea that the risk on environment might benefit EMF facts. And we, we've seen it in, we've seen it influence quite handedly the commodity currencies. So that's CAD, that's Aussie dollar, it's uh, Kiwi dollar. Uh, but uh, this is showing a emerging market 10 year real yield, right? So that's yield minus expected inflation over G10. Uh, and, and what you can see there is as that's widening up, the emerging market currency index is, is basically been uh, bottoming out, basing out, if you will. Uh, if you all remember a few days ago, I, or maybe it was last week, uh, the, the MSCI index broke above a six-year trend line, kind of like we're, we're seeing with gold. Uh, 
though it, it actually broke out gold still below that uh, that longer term trend line all that being said that seems to be um, that seems to be setting up in the current environment for that carry trade which again would would favor these currencies there's been a little volatility this week in terms of EMFX most notably around the South Ant uh, South African Rand with the uh, the SARB cutting rates uh, but all that being said with the weak dollar with things that we're seeing it does appear like uh, EM could have legs and just looking at that that bond premium of EM real yields over uh, G10 real yields uh, seems to be supportive of that as well. Uh, this is a uh, this is a chart that I like to show you guys every once in a while. It is the DEC 17, DEC 18 euro dollar spread. So it's it's basically the bond market's way of pricing in what the Fed is expected to do in terms of tightening in uh, 2018. Uh, and, and what you can see here, this is a downtrend aligns with what we're seeing in uh, the DXY. Which let me pull up the DXY. So you can see here we are pressing to new 11-month lows, um, and just, just that trend continues on. But uh, this this chart complements that view. Basically, that the Fed is anticipating anticipated by the bond market to do less and less and less. All right, so out of rates and into commodities. So uh, I mentioned that there's going to be the meeting in St. Petersburg, which is not expected to bring additional cuts or anything that really should support the market. In fact, I would I would say that it's safe to say right now there just is no plan to end the glut. Uh, the, the cuts did not necessarily work in the sense that uh, we do have, we do have um, U.S. shale production overtaking uh, or, or meeting that, that gap in the market, if you will. Uh, it is worth noting that the Baker Hughes numbers came out and there was a, uh, a one rig fall. Uh, so nothing that's really going to change the market, but the U.S. oil rig count fell by one to 764. Uh, but the the overall trend uh, is you know decently higher. I think we've added about 40 about 40 percent uh, uh, to the start of the year number. Uh, this to me is is definitely a story worth keeping an eye on, which is that. Uh, the uh, and, and I've talked a bit about what's going on in terms of uh, raw materials in China, uh, but this is a report that came out from Wood McKinsey, and it basically it was it was saying how uh, as as China goes after what's being called rogue suppliers of raw materials, um, and 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 they look to balance the market, uh, that there could be a shift as illegal aluminum supply basically is is becomes a key focus for the uh, for the Chinese government. Uh, there could be a shift, and again, this is uh, Wood McKinsey's view, uh, the commodity analyst firm, that you could start to see a significant deficit in raw materials, globally speaking. Uh, and again, it's it's basically these, these you could call them shadow suppliers, if you will. Um, it's often called rogue suppliers, but the idea there being that uh, that supply that's being brought on, um, basically out of the government's control, which is something they want to they want to clamp down on could lead to a rather large rally and so that to me could be absolutely critical not only for of course aluminum but other other markets as well uh, and and it's that significant deficit idea in terms of materials market that I think is worth keeping an eye on that could uh, possibly down the road lead to inflation but if, if nothing else could lead to strength in some of these commodity currencies most notably Aussie dollar um, so just just, just worth keeping an eye on. Uh, copper is extending its gains today to a five-month high. In fact, let me go to copper. All right, and here is the daily chart. So a bit of a bit of a pullback here, but nonetheless, you could see when when you apply uh, trend studies like uh, Ichimoku, uh, it does it does have that look like we are back into breakout mode. And again, we're seeing that with a handful of other other commodities. While there's been a bit of a pullback today, um, uh, the to me the, the dollar, which I just showed you, is uh, again touching new 11-month lows. Uh, but but we seem to see other forces that are supportive for uh, for higher for higher metals. Uh, and then again, we talked about gold already, but uh, gold is set for back-to-back -back weekly gains first time since early June. All right, this is the uh, few charts here that I think are worth keeping an eye on, uh, and, and this is helpful because especially when you look at something like uh, like copper uh, and what we were just looking at, uh, which is which is which is that you do not have an extended position in this market, though we are breaking out. And that's, to me, why that uh, that Euro report was so important, uh, the fact that it's not extended long. Uh, in, in fact, it might just be uh, years of short positions coming off the market that has helped lift Euro to where it is, meaning that if we do start to push into a more true uh, net long position, then, then that could carry Euro into the into the 
to the 20s. Uh, this is a similar scenario, but this is looking at the copper put call ratio, uh, and it basically just shows how level that is. Uh, so it's not it's not an extended market, but it is breaking out. So if that if that environment does support it. Um, then I think you could see metals uh, and materials rally as well. So uh, actually, you know, take energy out. Uh, both both precious and base is starting to look uh, a bit encouraging uh, from a technical perspective. All right, on to FX. So looking at FX, this is an updated strong week in the sense that uh, well, dollar remains the weakest currency on a relative basis, um, and, and right now dollar is extending its drops against the yen and euro. So let's uh, just pull those up, and then you can see there again, CAD is the strongest currency, which is really courtesy of uh, Guy DeBell, who again took down took down Aussie a, a few pegs on his on his comments. But uh, so this is Euro USD. And I'm I might I might see 117 before <laughs> before I stop talking on this webinar. You can see pretty strong move here, uh, pushing up against the top of that uh, of that channel that's framed price action really well. Uh, and then dollar yen. So dollar yen you can see uh, is pushing below that that 618 retracement uh, of this of this basically June July range. So uh, pretty pretty sharp pullback. Uh, but again. These are two very weak currencies pit up against each other uh, that, to me, don't really say don't really say a lot. Um, let's go to the FX themes and stories that we're seeing. And again, uh, the commodity the commodity sector is is looking at least to me increasingly attractive. Uh, but we shouldn't turn our attention away from euro. So uh, euro strength definitely is a is a key factor in uh, in what we're seeing with dollar weakness. Uh, but what I would say here is that whether you look at euro pound, whether you look at euro dollar, whether you look at euro yen. Uh, uh, there are there are attractive setups that I think emerged or, or, or solidified this week. Uh, so the first thing to share with you about euro is that if you look at the three month euro dollar riskies uh, or or risk reversals, which basically is showing you the premium of calls to puts or puts to calls, depending on if it's positive or negative, uh, the six month euro dollar. Uh, risk reversal is showing its most bullish reading since 2009 right so very very encouraging sign for euro bulls at least that option traders over the next six months are, are paying the most they've paid uh, for a put or paying or for a call and or paying the least they've paid for a put however you want to put it um, no pun intended that uh, that we've seen since 2009 all, all of which saying all of which says excuse me that uh, the options market is still pricing in euro upside uh, if you look at euro pound and euro pound shows something similar in fact let me just go to this chart so this is uh, this is a chart on three month risk reversals for euro pound uh, and positioning there is also supportive looking like we could see further upside uh, but let me go to that chart after this, but this is the three-month risk reversal for Euro Pound, uh, and you can see that that premium is sitting uh, near near the highest points that we've seen uh, for the year. So this is Euro Pound, uh, which is a, a, a an analyst pick that I put out recently. And again, I just I, I think that you have not only from a positioning perspective, but from an options perspective, which I'll show you in just a moment, uh, a whole slew of one-month risk reversals uh, seem to be rather encouraging. Uh, in fact, let me let me show you this here. So. Um, Again, the the idea that we're seeing here is that the premium being paid, uh, and I know the pixelation was a bit rough, but what you can see here is that right now across G10 and crosses, so that's a that's a, that's about 20 some odd currency pairs, uh, the highest premium being paid for calls to puts over the over the coming month is Euro USD. So calls are getting the highest the highest premium right now in Euro USD. Second highest is Euro Pound. In fact, when I wrote the when I wrote the Euro Pound analyst pick, the bullish Euro Pound pick, uh, it was because at the time at the time Euro Pound had the highest call premium, um, and, and so. Looking at it from that angle, you can see there uh, that you've got this euro bullishness really focused, really focused in on the options market. All right, let me go back here. Excuse me. Uh, and then again, not only does euro dollar, of course, have a clear trend, and it's, to me, is one to watch for uh, buying pullbacks. But in addition to that, if you look at euro yen, you know the the attractive trade used to be buying dollar against easy easy money central banks. Uh, now it seems like euro yen is the monetary uh, monetary policy divergence trade. And what I mean by that is while this was considered a bit more of a dovish ECB meeting than some people expected, uh, at, uh, the other end of it, and I think once, once the dust settles, these these two central banks, you know, couldn't have a more different view for the following year. Um, and, and, and what I mean by that is as I showed you yesterday the, uh, the Ionia or European overnight um, 
index, the basically the swamps in that market showing that you're starting to see hikes priced in on the in the euro money market. But uh, basically, you, I don't think you could have gotten a more dovish announcement from the BOJ. Again, they kicked out their inflation target getting hit into 2019, basically said, listen, we're, we're keeping with yield curve control, uh, we're, we're pushing forward with this with this easing stance. So while while your while dollar yen is pushing lower, uh, I think you look at euro yen as again another one to say, okay, that has also uh, a potential to uh, be attractive on any any type of dips that we get. And looking at this in just a bit more of a a, a closer angle, so you could see here rather sharp move. Uh, however, uh, let me pull up Ichi or excuse me Fibonacci. And with this, really what I'm looking at is that 382 to 618 zone. But right in there. So so we're pushing higher off of that. Uh, one of the more safer but later approaches when using Ichimoku uh, that I like to utilize is waiting for a cross of price above the baseline, uh, which basically just validates that the trend is the trend is accelerating or continuing uh, but I, I would look at that in, in the sense of if we can get that move above 130 basically and euro yen it could be a strong indication that uh, this trend is set to resume uh, over to some of the commodity currencies uh, I mentioned the CAD data earlier today pretty solid retail sales again doesn't doesn't change to me how aggressive the Bank of Canada is in hiking rates, but it definitely doesn't hurt their case. Uh, and then to me, one of the more encouraging data points over the last uh, 24 hours was the finance minister of New Zealand uh, who came out and said, listen, they are they are not bothered at all by the recent bout of Kiwi strength, which, which could be a prelude to uh, the RBNZ failing to talk down the Kiwi like we've recently heard them do. Um, so he, he said in quote that firms are performing very well at these current levels um, and, and that you know basically that the strength in the Kiwi is just an indication of, of the, the Canadian or excuse me the, the New Zealand uh, economy. So uh, that to me was rather encouraging especially again looking at something like the dollar which is very very weak and you've got a, a, a pattern here uh, at least looking at it from a uh, an, an Elliott wave form that we are getting these higher low corrective moves uh, and, and we seem to be accelerating higher now. So uh, while New Zealand has been discounted in terms of looking at it against Aussie and CAD over recent weeks, you could see we are getting a very firm breakout. And I think that uh, Stephen Joyce, the New Zealand finance minister's comments uh, are, are uh, a good thing to be encouraged by uh, as a Kiwi bull. Uh, and especially just aligns with the weakness that we're seeing persisting on uh, the DXY. All right, over to sentiment. So looking at sentiment here, uh, this is Euro pound. So We've been talking about euro pound and euro crosses quite a bit today, uh, but you could see here that the, uh, the the shorts have gotten a good deal more aggressive, and we we look at this from a contrarian point of view, meaning that if retail short traders are getting more aggressive, uh, and just to put a few more numbers on that, uh, what we've seen is a um, a thirty percent rise from last week in short positions on euro pound, uh, but in taking the contrarian view. This aggressive rise in short positions is indicative that we could see prices rise, at least from, again, the way we utilize IG client sentiment. So uh, that, to me, again, just aligns with what we're seeing, whether you look at options, whether you look at uh, IG client sentiment, whether you look at the charts, uh, that there is uh, a lot, a lot to like across the board for the euro. And it's, uh, again, from a momentum perspective, just nothing to fight, nothing to really stand in the way of. So uh, that is going to be it for today uh, and, and for the week. So I appreciate you guys sticking with me coming in a little bit earlier than uh, uh, than we do the rest of the week. But uh, it's always a fun way to close out the week with this webinar and really cap back what what has been uh, the key themes for the week. And, and the way it looks now, I mean, there just is uh, – very little momentum or, or very little reason to see uh, a need to, you know, quote unquote, bottom scrape uh, G10 and buy dollar. I just, right now, given what, given the other themes going on, specifically Euro focused, uh, it looks like we could continue to see that uh, that dollar weaken uh, until we see or hear of a new tune 
being sung by uh, by the Fed. Uh, so with that, guys, I want to thank you all for your time. Uh, again, this was a recorded session, so if there's any of the uh, the things that you want to you know refresh on, feel free to watch the recording. This will be converted into an article. You can uh, you can read some of the summations uh, that I that I make. But as well, you're always welcome to reach out to me. Or again, uh, if you decide to use that demo from IG, you have questions on some of the resources we have. Uh, by all means, feel free to reach out to me. Take care, guys. Have a great weekend.